Okay, so welcome to this next video in which we're discussing Kiss and Run Fusion. Okay, so we're in the process of doing this total internal reflection fluorescence microscopy experiment, uh, where we are trying to um, show Kiss and Run Fusion. So, we're going to excite this neuron by depolarizing its plasma membrane, so that uh, calcium comes in, you get a calcium signal, and that calcium is going to cause the exocytosis of the neurotransmitter. Okay, so what will happen, at least by our theory, is that you will form a fusion pore initially. So if this is our synaptic vesicle docked at the plasma membrane, what will initially happen is that it will form a fusion pore like this. Now the camera is turned on at this point, and we're doing this total internal reflection continuously, so we are watching in real time as fluorescence appears. Now, when a fusion pore appear, uh, um, a fusion pore comes into being, I've forgotten the word, comes into being, emerges, uh, is formed, is probably a good way of expressing that, um, what will happen is some of the protons in the synaptic vesicle, they will get out, basically. So protons are going to rush out of this uh, fusion pore here. So this little connection of lipid connecting the docked synaptic vesicle with the presynaptic membrane, that's called a fusion pore. Okay, so when we form this fusion pore, protons will leave. That will mean that the pH in this synaptic vesicle goes up. So remember, when P proton concentration goes down, pH goes up. Okay, and uh, that will mean that the fluorescent properties of our synaptofluorin uh, protein that are in this synaptic vesicle, they're going to come back on. So, what will now happen is the synaptofluorin molecules, the green fluorescence protein attached to the synaptobrevin protein, will now absorb the energy from this evanescent wave, and then will start emitting that energy back out as green photons. So we're going to get green photons arriving. So we will be able to see which vesicles are fusing, because we will be able to see these green fluorescence coming back into being, okay? Right, now, if kiss and run fusion occurs, i.e. our hypothesis is that some of these vesicles will not fully fuse, instead what will happen is that uh, some of them will supply a little bit of neurotransmitter out of this fusion pore. They'll also supply a little bit of their lipid into the plasma membrane, but then they'll close back up. What would you expect to happen in that case? You would expect the fluorescence to disappear, and let me explain why. You might think, well, surely it will remain, because the proton, con even when it closes back up, the proton concentration will remain lower. Because, you know, you've lost these protons, so the con proton concentration is now lower. So, surely, the fluorescent property of the synaptofluorin should not be quenched. So, we should remain green, basically. But you don't. And the reason you don't is because, remember, this vesicle is full. Uh, in the, uh, in the, sorry, in the membrane, the vesicle has loads of these VATPase proteins in its membrane. So here are these VATPases, which hydrolyze ATP to pump protons into the synaptic vesicle lumen. So, these are going to be getting busy, basically. They're going to be pumping protons into the synaptic vesicle, and they will return the proton concentration to what it was prior to the formation of the fusion pore, and therefore they will re-quench the synaptofluorin. They'll return the proton concentration back to what it was. The proton concentration will quench the fluorescent properties of the synaptofluorin, so you will stop seeing these vesicles as green. So, if you see vesicles temporarily becoming green, and then going back to being colourless, i.e. you can't see them, that would demonstrate um, that we have... Uh, it, well, it would be a nice um, confirmation of this kiss and run fusion theory that we've been working on. On the other hand, if a vesicle goes on to full fusion, what will we see? Okay, so if a vesicle goes on to full fusion, i.e. it completely fuses with the membrane and releases all its neurotransmitter, then basically all the protons in this synaptic vesicle lumen, they have all, all been released into the synaptic cleft now, and all of the synaptofluorin molecules, so these synaptobrevin 
molecules with the green fluorescence protein. So here's the green fluorescence protein now, because remember, the green fluorescence protein was inside the synaptic vesicle here, and the synaptic brevin portion was cy cytoplasmic. So the synaptic brevin portion will remain cytoplasmic, and here's the green fluorescence protein. The green fluorescence protein will now be on the extracellular um, side of the of the cell, of the plasma membrane, basically. So this is the extracellular fluid. So now it won't be in a high proton concentration at all. So its quenching properties will do most definitely remain unquenched, basically. So it will remain green. So basically, if you go on to full fusion, what you will see is you will see green fluorescence and it will remain green. In fact, it might even get bigger. You know, once it's fused in, you might see a bigger ring because the whole, what was a sort of curved round vesicle is now a flat membrane, so it might get bigger. Whereas, if kiss and run fusion exists, what you will see is you'll see a green fluorescent dot appearing on this axon terminal, and then it will go after a certain amount of time. So, if we saw that, that would have been a nice confirmation of kiss and run fusion. And indeed, this is what Stevens et al. saw. They saw these uh, green fluorescent dots appearing and then disappearing, and appearing again and disappearing, which confirm well, is a nice um, is a nice backer upper of um, of the kiss and run fusion theory that we've been developing. Okay, so we will cut this video here, and we'll continue our discussion of experimental techniques that can. Uh, argue in favour of kiss and rum fusion in the next video.